guys I wanted to start off my video showing you my donut peach which is doing really well it is blooming everywhere and they're beautiful pink blooms and look there's a bee already they're so gorgeous such a pretty plant So it's been raining for several days and it's finally a clear day and everything's been soaked and we had probably about 11 inches of rain or more. I'm not really sure because I, f I heard on the news that there were some cities that got 11 inches of rain. However, I had a Sterilite box that was sitting upside down and it was kind of covering one of my garden beds one of my beds that uh, that are these fire rings and I was just protecting my bulbs so they don't get soaked with water because if they get too much water the bulbs will rot so I was protecting my bulbs let me show you so here is the exact bed that I've got here and I had two of these Sterilite boxes covering it. This one couldn't carry water anyway. It's got a hole. So I just, I'm using it as like a greenhouse. And what's funny is that this hyacinth is doing great. My cilantro in there is doing great. But everything else, I don't know if it rotted or what. But I haven't seen any blooms come up. And it could be that it'll come back next year. I had two of these Sterilite boxes. So here's the other one. It somehow blew over and flipped over just right so that it's right side up. And this one happened to be the one that's able to collect water. So here I have probably 20 gallons of water, not more, about 18 to 20 gallons. And that's clean rainwater that's uh, doesn't have fluoride or chloride and soft water it's great so I'm going to use that to water my plants and I started tomato seeds a couple weeks ago in this styrofoam box in some seedling pots and I threw this sterilite container on top of it to keep this the soil warm because tomatoes and peppers like to start in Germany in warm soil warm warm conditions so what I did was I flipped the sterilite box upside down in order to collect the excess water because I didn't want it going into my styrofoam box to to drown my seedlings and it worked in fact between yesterday's rain and the previous day's rain I emptied this container right now it's full of water but I had emptied it and I looked and checked on my seedlings. I pulled them out, dumped any extra water that got in because it's not fully sealed, there's a little gap. And so I dumped the excess water and there's one little green tomato plant coming up, I believe. So soon I will have lots of tomato plants. I'm growing some for my sister and family. It's been so rainy and cold and windy it was raining so much and I do believe I collected 11 inches of rain in that Sterilite container, the really big one, because it had flipped over at some point. It was practically full to the top that day that I checked on it and I, that wasn't even intentional, but it's wonderful because I get to slowly release the water into the plants that I like and into the garden beds that I like. So over here, I haven't been out here for days and my Swiss chard, rhubarb chard, cat soy, and pak choy, and spinach, they're just doing really great. That one's bolting. Gotta get, into, get in there because I want to use these a little bit longer while my other plants start to germinate. 
in this garden bed my cilantro is doing great with all that extra water some onion sets are coming up garlic bulbs and those are my younger newer tetsoi that one's already going to bolting going to seed and over here I've got my blueberry that I recently bought and it was just a bunch of sticks and now it's starting to have fresh new leaves they're reddish colored this is the Duke blueberry my onions and garlic bed is doing fantastic and in fact right next to it I'm growing cilantro that volunteered itself I've got weed barrier down there over here I threw some random seeds that fell out of my seed box and they were just everywhere and I believe these are probably something in the brassica family and that's okay I'll try to get to them quickly or give them to my chickens before the harlequin bugs show up and then over here I planted some radishes it's china rose radishes So the heavy winds blew down the shade cover for my chickens in their run and so this whole area is super sunny and hot and they're hiding out back there in the shade which is great because we're trying to offer them as much shade and food and all kinds of stuff. And let's take a look at the soil that they're making for me. As you can see over there, as soon as I opened the door, they ran over here because they know I feed them all kinds of stuff. So there's leaves that are still intact. And then over here, the leaves are basically getting really shredded up. And because of the recent rains, it's helping to break down that the leaves as well. So it's really almost like soil here. I'm not sure how tall black oil sunflowers get, but I hope they get really tall. They're starting to pop up. I didn't even know if they like cooked it down or anything like that because I got it from the feed bag and I just stuck it in the ground and they're growing just all over. So this is the area with my borage, so I'm going to have lots of sunflowers amongst the borage, which is good. One is going to be tall and the other one's going to be a shrub layer. I just spotted a beautiful yellow hyacinth, which I've never seen before. It's the ones that I planted two years ago. And then the pink hyacinth, which is starting to die off a little bit. I'm going to have to have my daughter come over here and pick her snow peas. She loves to eat snow peas and there are tons of them in here. This tall plant is a chrysanthemum and it's so tall but down here it's already making new leaves. So I might take down this upper portion which I had to tie together because it was flopping over. I don't think it's going to give me flowers until fall. And here are all my other tatsoi. They're all trying to bolt and make flowers. I've got to get to them for sure. I am so sad. All my papayas that were about four and a half feet tall, they just shriveled up and died. It was too cold and too wet this year. So although I got them to be lush and nice right here next to my kefir lime tree, um, which is making tiny new branches and um, new leaves. It just makes me sad that, you know, those died off when they grew so big. So I think next time I grow them, in the wintertime, I'm definitely going to protect them. Now that I know what to expect. But I just keep having to start over and over with the papayas. I've got one of those bright orange roses popping up. I love it looking good and here's a new bud. They survived the winter thank goodness. In my Chicago piece this this one looks dead this stick here but the other half of it looks good so I hope it's true to type of the 
Peace, Chicago Peace Rose. Here is my clearance um, Gerbera Daisy and it's really cute. It's white with a yellow center, yellow and green. This little pink edging. It's cute. And here's the other new one and I guess it matures to fully white. But gorgeous nonetheless. I can't wait for this one to bloom. It's kind of looking sad. But it's still alive, so that's good. Here's the other one. I love that orangey yellow deep color. So my apricot tree is starting to bloom. It's making buds. The hookah is doing good. Coreops is not so good. Just waiting for everything to come alive. This year I've collected well over 5,000 gallons of water because we had so much rain unexpectedly and I just try to grab every single Sterilite container, every single jug, every single pot and pan, everything to, to collect as much water as possible because even though it seems like we have a lot of water and there's mudslides and all kinds of stuff, you, one can never have enough water in this desert location. It is an arid location and despite all that rain it's not going to fill up all the reservoirs enough so we have to continue to conserve water. So that's what I expect to do and it's saving me in water and bills and all kinds of stuff and it's better to use free harvested rainwater to water your plants than to use chlorinated fluoridated water so I'm going to continue to do that and my husband constructed this wood to cover my trough so that it doesn't collect mosquitoes and such and so that it doesn't evaporate as well Hi friends, I always stop to admire this beautiful donut peach tree. It's chock full of blossoms, a beautiful pink color, and I am just loving it. A beautiful pink color all the way up the tree, and the bees are loving it. Now over here I have this fire ring, and I have some herbs. This is fennel and some um, onions and some pineapple sage and I had a tomato growing here but it died and I pulled it out and I had some basil and I don't think they overwintered but that's okay. I sowed some cilantro seeds in there and Hopefully those will come up and fill it in. Meanwhile, I'm going to use this fire ring. I'm just going to pull it up and I'm going to move it elsewhere. So this used to have the fire ring two years ago. And then last year, I pulled the fire ring out and I had placed zinnia seeds and other things in here. So there were zinnias. And the year before, it was really beautiful. It had sunflowers, bachelor's buttons, and zinnias. So I pulled out the fire ring and just grew other flowers last year, primarily the orange zinnias. I'm kind of maintaining that circular pattern with my trellis there and I'm trying to keep possums or anything out of that area from scratching up my seedlings. I threw some poppy seeds in there. I think those are it that are coming up, as well as my hyacinths from two years prior. And I have some other things growing, but so far, because it's been pretty cold, 
Things haven't popped up yet, so I'll see. If not, I'll reseed it. So back to this spot. I had a lot of blackberry weeds, blackberry uh, canes that were growing here, as well as grass weeds, the crabgrass. So I had covered this area with lots of cardboard and it's slowly breaking down. When, when you lift up the cardboard, you actually see a lot of wood lice and earthworms. However, it still has a few uh, weeds. What I'm going to do is move my fire ring over here, lay out a lot of newspaper and cardboard so that nothing comes through easily and it'll take all that time to break down whatever's underneath the soil and I'll have another growing area here which is not being used currently so I may as well use it. So I have moved the fire ring from the other location where I had some herbs and garlic or green onions growing in it and I moved it over to this location and I've been working at killing those weeds and they just keep coming back. They're pretty aggressive. So what I'm going to do is I layered a ton under this fire ring and then I put some coconut coir down and then I put down soil that I bought from Costco, a brand new bag that I never opened. However, it got rained upon so some of the the nutrients may have flowed out of it which is fine because it's aged soil because when I first got it and I used it to plant I sowed some seeds in there and they never came up and, and it really smelled really strong of manure so I think it was still hot compost and it was burning my seedlings so this is aged soil so it should be good to go and the other thing is I'm going to sow a ton of alliums whether it be um, onions or green onions or chives everything in the allium family so we'll see how many pop up but I love to eat everything in the allium family practically with every meal whether it be in a salad in stir fries and anything I'll find a way to put alliums into my meal so this season brought another sale at Costco of soil and I bought several bags of it however I can't use it like I said because it smells strongly of manure or strongly that it's still some kind of breakdown is still taking place and so I can't add it to this fire ring so although this fire ring is not halfway full it has some coconut coir underneath and then it has one huge bag of soil um, so I think it'll be enough when it comes to alliums because their roots aren't too deep and they're not a root vegetable so it might work out pretty well so I tried to sow the seeds in uh, clockwork fashion kind of like a clock so it's all in concentric like a clock direction and so in the middle I planted some Tithonia the Mexican sunflower it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna be red and then it's gonna be in a sea of green hopefully if any onions and bunching onions and leeks pop up I grew several and I labeled them and right there there's a big gap so right in between that wedge between those two labels they're all Carentin leeks and the ones where they're spaced very small that's the specific one with nothing in between and then over here I had quite a few Chinese chives from Baker Creek Seeds. Hopefully most of them will come up. I love um, everything in the Allium family because it helps fight cancer and it's so aromatic when you cook it. It adds sweetness and nice flavors to anything whether it be soups or broths or stir fries. So I planted 
this is really old and like I said I thought that they would last a while so I kept them but they're very short-lived seeds so I planted the Southport White Globe Bunching Onion I planted I sowed the Elisa Craig Onion the this one I ran out of I had n none left because I tried to grow it earlier this season and it was much too cold and much too wet so it never came up so I did not plant this in this garden bed and then this is um, white Lisbon bunching onion or scallion and that's exactly what I love I love to use this in everything um, American flag leek I love leeks. They have a, a nice, milder taste than onions. Chinese chives. I hope to grow much of many of those. And then the Carrington leek. So I have bought many, many seeds because I love everything in the Allium family. And I don't mind growing it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with mesh because I don't know if it's a possum or or raccoons or whatnot that come and dig in here. I mean, in anything that I have that's freshly dug, for some reason they're attracted to like moist soil. I think they're looking for grubs beneath the soil. So what I do is I'm going to cover it and protect it from any critters. Okay, so I put this mesh down, this hardware cloth on top of it and it's just perfect because it fits right at the edges with a tiny gap and as, the, as soon as things get near it then it'll get snagged and the, on the edges and it won't want to be here. With all these varieties hopefully some of them pop up and um, I'll have lots of alliums to eat and harvest. I watered it in with just a gallon of water it's due to rain tomorrow and the day after, so I just wanted to get it started to, to germinate. So over here I have my little tangerines from my sister's house. She gave me some tangerines and I ate the fruit and it was really sweet and juicy and it had lots of seeds so I threw the seeds into one big pot and it made six little plants, this being the tiniest one, probably deprived of lots of nutrients and root space. And I should have transplanted them last year, but I didn't, I got lazy. So this year I transplanted it, and the leaves are one lobe instead of three trilobe. So I believe it is similar to the original type. As far as flavor goes, I hope it doesn't taste like a lemon because Next to her tangerine trees, she has two tangerines and one lemon, and I think her neighbor has a lemon. So we'll see how it goes. And who knows, it could be the sweet variety or some something in the middle. I have to bring my seeds indoors because if I forget, it's gonna rain tonight and it, it's gonna get destroyed. So let me do that now.